Homicide phoned at the crack of dawn and said three of his boys were going to do some fishing at Hanson Dam, which is about 18 miles from Hollywood as the crow flies. Not being a crow, I didn't fly. But I did drive out to see if they were having any luck. They were already fishing when I got there. Only they weren't using rods. They were dragging the lake for a body. I was pretty sure I knew whose body they dragged to the top when and if they latched onto it with their grappling hooks. I'd only watched them a few minutes when they made contact and started to haul in their catch. I stood there on the lake bank hoping it wouldn't be a body, that it might turn out to be an old bed spring or a rubber boat, anything but a corpus delecti. They brought something to the surface. It was a body, all right. I decided to leave. I'd seen all I wanted to see for the moment. Death is a very final thing. There isn't much a private detective like me can do about it, unless it happens to be murder. I drove in San Fernando Road toward town, trying to add things up. They didn't add right. I knew a certain party was waiting for me at the office at City Hall. This party would expect some very definite answers, which I didn't have for him yet. How soon do we get the coroner's report, Hogan? It's hard to tell, Lieutenant. They just delivered the body to the morgue. Okay, stay with it. Be sure to call me if you find out anything. I'll do that. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? I don't feel very talkative. You shouldn't. They just recovered the body. I know. I was there. You should feel very proud of yourself. Well, look, Doyle, what happened wasn't my fault. There are a lot of things you don't know about this case. No doubt. It's an old habit of yours, holding things from the police until something happens. Just what did happen? Well, I don't quite know yet. I trust you don't mind telling me what you do know. From the beginning? From the very beginning. But you already know a lot of things that have happened. All right, tell them to me again. I'd like to hear the whole story from your angle, up to the suicide. You still insist it was suicide? What else? Murder, maybe. Jeff, people who are murdered don't leave suicide notes. If it was a suicide note... Will you stop bickering with me and tell me what you know? Okay. It started when I met Tannis Wood, which seems a long time ago, considering it was just yesterday morning. I walked into the golden bubble, and there she was. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Sally. Is the lady in my office a client of mine or a customer of yours? Both. She's buying coffee from me while waiting for you. She's on a third cup already. Lucky I arrived. A fourth cup of that stuff could be lethal. I understand you're waiting to see me. I am, if you happen to be Jeff Jones. I am? Shall we get right down to your problem? I don't even know if I have a problem. It's about my sister. I'm worried about her. What's the matter with her? If I knew that, Mr. Jones, I wouldn't be here ready and willing to pay for your services. Nice to meet a client who's ready and willing to pay. We don't seem to vibrate in rhythm. Perhaps we'd better forget about the whole thing. Up to you. You're rude. Right. You're exasperating. And you're beautiful. I don't suppose anybody's ever told you that before, so let me be the first. You're also amusing. Well, sit down and vibrate with me. We're right on the beam. I can feel it. You're a very compelling individual. Could I compel you to tell me your name? It's Tannis Wood. Care to tell me about your sister now? There's not much to tell. In the past two months, a great change has come over her. She's nervous and morose, jittery about something. It's a jittery world. But it's not like Maris to be that way. She was a very happy person till all this started. All this? Yes. Meaning what? Whatever it is that's bothering her. She seems in deadly fear of something. But she won't tell me what it is. When I question her, she rants and screams at me like a crazy woman. She still doesn't tell you anything? 
Not a thing. That's why I came to you. Well, it sounds like a job for a psychiatrist, not a private detective. I suggested that she visit a psychiatrist and she ordered me out of the house. You can find out what's wrong with her. You will talk to her and see her, won't you, Mr. Jones? What makes you think she'll talk to a detective when she won't even open up to her own sister? She won't know that you're a detective. I'll introduce you as a friend of mine. You can put up with me for a few days, can't you? I can try. Fifty a day, plus expenses. Will one hundred dollars in advance be satisfactory? Eminently. Good. The address is on this card. I'll see you there at two this afternoon. I'll be there. See you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Cash customer. Yeah. Two fifties on deposit and more to come. <laughs> For a guy that don't pay no rent, you do okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'll just apply fifty of this on your tab to keep it from dying on the vine. Sort of a sneaky attitude to take. <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> The address Tannis Wood gave me was in the outpost. I was curious about Tannis' sister, Maris. Wondered if she'd be as beautiful as Tannis, which was very beautiful indeed. The house was strictly Class A, with pleasant lines and a well-groomed look, like Tannis. you don't mind my being early. Who are you? Oh, now, don't tell me we're out of tune again. We were vibrating perfectly three hours ago. I haven't the vaguest idea what you're talking about, and I've never seen you before in my life. Good day, sir. Oh, now, just a minute, What's sweetheart. What's the idea? There's something a little wacky about this setup. Suppose you give me some answers before I lose my temper. Suppose you leave before I call the police. Go ahead. I'd love to have him hear my story. Very well. You shall have the opportunity. What is it, dear? Who is this man? I don't know. He forced his way in here and refuses to leave. I'm calling the police. Uh, that won't be necessary, dear. Out. No, look, mister. Out before I use force. You don't impress me as being the forceful type. Oh, no. Well. Calling the police. I won't have this going on in my house. Don't be a fool. I'll handle this. Calling the police. You killed him. I know you killed him. Shut up. A gun. He's carrying a gun. He's also carrying a private detective's badge, too. What do you know about this? Nothing. Don't lie to me. Did you hire a detective to come snooping around here? Answer me. Did you? No, Tom, I didn't. I never saw the man before. I swear it. Then how'd he happen to come here? I don't know. He just came to the door and forced his way in. That's all I know. Why would I hire a private detective? Uh, you've been acting so weird lately, you're liable to do anything. Not only that, friend, she did. What did she do? She hired me to find out what was wrong with her sister. Jeff, darling, you got here early. Well, sure. I... Now I'm not sure I'm even here. Do you know this person? Surely I know him. He's an old friend of mine, Jeff Jones. I haven't seen him in ages until I happened to run into him this morning. Just by chance. You lie. You hired him to spy on me. Hired him? I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yes, you do. He's a private detective. My own twin sister hired him. What are you trying to do to me? What are you trying to do? Please, Maris, try to be sensible. Sensible? Sensible? Oh, I hate you. I hate you. 
I won't go on like this. Do you hear me? I won't go on like this. Better look after her, Tom. I will. Well, you'll be lost without this cannon, Mr. Jones. Thanks. You shouldn't have hired him without my knowledge. I was only trying to help. You know how upset Maris has been acting. Yes, I know. I suppose you meant well, but well, this has upset her terribly. Did you have to tell her you were a private detective? I didn't tell her a thing. I take it the gentleman who just left is your brother-in-law? Yes. You didn't tell me about him. You also neglected to tell me that your sister Maris was your twin. I walked right into a big hassle, which ended abruptly when your brother-in-law landed a lucky punch. While I was in dreamland, he took my badge and my gun. They spoke for themselves. I'm sorry, Jeff. I meant to be here when you arrived. This would have to happen just when we were vibrating in complete harmony. Are we? Definitely. Don't you feel it? The only thing I feel at the moment is unemployed. I haven't done you any good and won't now that your sister knows I'm a private detective. So you, you get your money back. Here's fifty dollars. <laughs> friend of mine borrowed the other fifty. I'll get it back. Put it in your pocket. I don't want it back. You earned the hundred dollars by taking that beating from Tom. Oh, it wasn't exactly a beating. He just got lucky. Oh, uh, I understand. You do realize that my sister is a problem, don't you? There's something certainly bothering her. There's no doubt about that. Goodbye, Jeff. It's been nice knowing you. Even if things didn't work out as I planned. Including the vibration. I wouldn't worry too much about it, kid. One of these days, a guy will come along who will vibrate just right and stick with it. I marked the case closed, but it wouldn't stay that way. Sully reopened it when I went to the Golden Bubble for dinner. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Sully. What's good in the kitchen, if anything? You want to eat at a time like this? Why not? It's 8 o'clock and I'm hungry. Ain't that the woman who employed you this morning? Mrs. Maris Hamilton, object of police search. She's your client, ain't she? No, she's my client's twin sister. When it happens, I, I don't have a client at the moment. Move over, Sully. See you later. Yeah. People are not cooperating. She was your wife and your sister. You lived here under the same roof with her. Yet you both say you don't know why she was upset. It doesn't make sense. I've told you everything I know, Lieutenant. So have I. I'll read her note again. Dear Tom, I just can't face things any longer. So I've made a decision. It's the only thing left for me. Goodbye, Maris. Just what were these things she could no longer face, Mr. Hamilton? I've told you repeatedly I don't know. She wouldn't tell me or Tannis what was preying on her mind. She wouldn't confide in anyone. I tried everything. Including hiring me this morning. Jeff, where do you fit into this picture? I don't anymore. Explain that. Miss Wood had hired me this morning to find out what was troubling her sister. The assignment blew up in my face. Why? Mrs. Hamilton found out through no fault of my own that I was a private detective. My usefulness ended right there. Well, then what are you doing here now? Well, just call me curious. I'll call you a lot more than... I won't say it in front of these people. But there's a woman missing, and this case is now in the hands of the police. Very efficient hands, too. Lieutenant Doyle is an outstanding limb of the law, folks. Of course, he makes mistakes now and then, but he's really quite solid. You get out of here and don't come back. Is that the suicide note? It is. What about it? Mind if I read it, pal? I heard you mumble it, but your diction wasn't so good. Okay, friend, read it. Not that it'll do any good. Practically the same thing she said this morning when she blew up a Tannis for hiring me. 
Then she really was upset. Very. Could be you're all too upset about that note, though. Too upset? It's definitely a threat to commit suicide. Not necessarily. Maybe she just went somewhere to get away from it all. Hello. This is Lieutenant Doyle. This is Hogan, Lieutenant. We just found Mrs. Hamilton's car at Hanson Dam. All locked up and nobody in it. Nice going, Hogan. Have it towed to the police garage. Make arrangements to drag the lake as soon as it's daylight. Well, she got away from it, all right. They just picked up her car, abandoned, at Hanson Dam. No. No, she, she can't have done a thing like that. Poor Maris. She had everything a woman could possibly want. So the lady's dead. Her body's been recovered, which brings us up to now. She'd be alive at this moment if you hadn't dismissed the matter so lightly. A simple little thing like a phone call could have prevented her suicide. I could have placed her under restraint. You still insist it was a suicide? Why do you keep hinting that it isn't? Maybe I've just got a suspicious nature. Here's a rundown from the coroner, Lieutenant. Abrasion on the back of her head and no water in her lungs. Well, that means she was dead before she hit the water. It also means she was murdered. See you later. Wait a minute. Where are you going? About my business. Unless, of course, I'm under arrest. In that case, I stand on my constitutional rights and demand to see my lawyer. Okay, you big joker, but I warn you, this is my murder case. Don't you meddle. Lieutenant, you know I don't meddle. The murder's all yours. Hogan, I have a feeling Jeff knows or suspects something that might save us time. Pin a tail on him. Right. Mark speaking. Uh, hello, this is Doyle of Homicide. Any prints on the Hamilton car that was towed in from Hanson Dam? Not a print, Lieutenant. We went over it with a fine-tooth comb. The dame must have wiped them all off before she committed suicide. The dame didn't commit suicide. She was murdered. You don't say. I do say. Dennis Wood had given me $100 for a few hours of work. I figured I still owed her some time, so I went to the Hall of Records to do a little checking. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? How about doing a Mexican hat dance? For that, I would need music. With all that beautiful melody in your voice, you need more music? You must want a very big favor to make with such sweet talk. I do, baby. For you, I will do my best. Thanks. A man by the name of Jeremiah Z. Wood died a few years ago. I don't know what the Z stood for, but I do know he was very rich. I remember. He was a wealthy man. How would a fellow go about getting a gander at his will? Uh, this, uh, gander. I do not understand. A gander is a goose. No, baby. A gander is a male bird with a long neck that does a lot of snooping around, like me. Is it possible to get a look at his will? For you, almost anything is possible. I will get it for you. Thanks. Nice day. Yeah. Too nice to be tailing me. Why don't you go back and tell Doyle you lost me? I haven't yet. You might. I don't want to waste time trying. You're a smart guy, aren't you? Oh, not smart, just industrious. How did you happen to case me anyway? Saw you in Doyle's office about six months ago. Great memory. Yeah. Makes you slightly useless as a shadow. Yeah, I see what you mean. Bye. Bye. I came out of the Hall of Records. 15 minutes later with the information I wanted. Plus a very warm feeling for a beautiful senorita named Dolores. I headed out San Fernando Road, bound for Hanson Dam. My rear view mirror told me I was no longer being tailed, which suited me fine. I wanted another look at the scene of the crime, if it was the scene of the crime, which I doubted. One of the reservoir crew showed me the spot where Maris Hamilton's car had been parked before the police towed it away. I examined the wheel marks of her car. Also, some wheel marks right next to them. Wheel marks that were dug in deep, like someone had spun their rear wheels in a hurry to back out of there recently. Maybe as recently as last night. I took a sample of the good earth from the deep tracks and wrapped it in a nice, clean handkerchief. A procedure which confused my guide no end. 
I thanked him and went back to Hollywood to visit the garage of a mansion up in the outpost. There I collected some more samples of a good earth. Why, Mr. Jones, what in the world are you doing here? Vibrating, beautiful. I think I'm right on the beam. I don't understand. Invite me in, I'll tell you all about it. Please do come in. Tom! Why are you calling him? I'd rather he be here when you explain. Tom! What is it, darling? What's he doing here? Why don't you ask me that? Okay, I'm asking you. Since the death of your wife has turned out to be murder, I'm following through. That isn't necessary. The police are handling the case. Sounds like Lieutenant Doyle's been here. He was, and we answered all his questions satisfactorily with our attorney present. I see. Thought you ought to have your mouthpiece on hand, huh? I don't blame you. Out. Not this time, chum. Get over there. I want to ask you a few questions. You've no right in this house. You've no legal authority to question us. Sit down. Tanner's invited me in. And when it comes to law, friend, anybody can make a citizen's arrest. Especially when the crime is murder. Are you saying we're under arrest? That depends on the answers I get. I read your father's will today, Tannis. He left a million dollars to you and your sister in a joint trust fund. Is there anything unusual about children inheriting money? No, but a survival clause sometimes is a swell motive for a killing. As your sister's survivor, you get all the money now. What does that prove? That you'll both be very wealthy when things quiet down and you get married. That's ridiculous. Yeah. He was really vibrating just now when he called you darling. You know, Mr. Jones, you uh, bore me. Good, I'll bore you some more. Yesterday, twice, your wife tried to phone the police, but you grabbed the phone out of her hand each time. Why? Because my wife was terribly upset, and police coming to the house would only have made things worse. You sure it wasn't because she might have been upset enough to tell the cops the truth? The truth about what, Mr. Jones? That you and Sonny Boy were in love and she was afraid you were going to knock her off? You must admit that is ridiculous. I implored you to find out what was wrong with Maris. Sure, and it was a smart move. It made the suicide story sound good when I told Doyle something certainly was bothering your sister. You used me, Tannis. I don't like being used. You're merely theorizing, Jones, and you bore me. Yeah? Yes, Maris's suicide note was established was in her own handwriting. Now, how do you explain that? It wasn't a suicide note. She was going away. Giving you up to her own sister, leaving you both free to vibrate all over the place. That didn't fit in with your plans, so you killed her. A little bit ahead of schedule, maybe, but you killed her. You still bore me. As a matter of fact, if you didn't have that gun in your hand, I'd beat you to a pulp. Look, no gun. <laughs> I think we've had just about enough of that, Mr. Jones. I'll take the gun, Tannis. I think not, Mr. Jones. Just a bullet from it. You wouldn't want to try for two murders in a row, would you? You can't prove that we killed Maris. I already have. 
There's a big sedan outside. You drove it out last night to pick up Loverboy after he pushed your sister's body in the lake. Her car had to be left to make the suicide story good. You don't think a silly theory like that would hold up in court? I think so. There's a heavy dew at the dam every night. Last night it was particularly heavy. You left tire tracks, sweetheart. And your wheels also picked up some of the red clay of the lake bank. Now you want to give me the gun before I call my pal, Lieutenant Doyle? Sure. I'll give it to you. You didn't think I'd be silly enough to leave a loaded gun around where a killer could grab it, did you, Tannis? Wasn't very sporting of you running a bluff about the tire imprints in the red clay. It worked, didn't it? Tannis and Loverboy confessed. Oh, sure, it worked. You mean the tire tracks in the mud didn't match? Yeah, they matched all right, Sully, but uh, Jeff didn't know they would when he ran that whizzer on the killers. Jeff, there are ethics to be considered. I never met a killer with an ethic. <laughs> <laughs>